Social media has been a little bit boring since they banned Kanye West. I'm sorry, yay. I don't know what to call him. It depends on the week. Him and um, Dave, Dave Peterson. What's his name? Skeet Davidson. You can't say that. Oh, it I'm does. sorry, I didn't Ken. know. According to Ye's version, he was the one pushing for the divorce. He was the one. Oh, Pete? No. Kanye. Wasn't he like begging her to come back? Anyway, that's it. The year is over. We're in 2023 now. <laughs> Bueno, señores, welcome to another episode of Talk Fast, Listen Slow. Yo soy Kat. ¿Y tú quién eres? <laughs> tu bicochito. Hey. Hey. Also known as Angela. Welcome to another episode. We're so excited to be back. Uh, this has been a very interesting week. Yes, it has been. Kat. Well, first of all, yeah. social media has been a little bit boring since they banned Kanye West. I'm sorry. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I don't know what to call him. It depends on the week. Is it yay or yay? Yay. Yay. See, I'm an immigrant. I'm still yeah, very Dominican. Yeah, because it's from Kanye. Oh, that's right. Right. And they used to call him Yay a long time ago. Why so. did they band him? Which one Which one of the rents got him banned? Because he was doing it for a while. Uh, I, he said something. I didn't see what it was, but apparently he said something about Trevor Noah. And um... Trevor Noah is getting real soft lately. Like, for some <laughs> reason, he's always, like, just going on social media talking, you know I mean? We all are on social what? media talking stuff, but like it's not, we're all experts on social media. This is true. We're all we ex- went <laughs> we're we all- went from uh we went from COVID experts. Now we're all war experts. You know, we all know wartime. Right, right. Very interesting. But yeah, Kanye got banned because he did call some names, which I guess is a slang name to Trevor Noah. Oh really? I, I didn't see it, so I'm not really aware of what it was. But the funny thing was when him and um Dave Dave Peters, what's his name? Skeet Davidson. You can't say that. <laughs> Why not? Because Skeet means, what does Skeet mean? I know it means something I, really bad. Really? Yeah. It does? Oh, it I'm does. sorry. I didn't Can, know. I mean. Uh, Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson. But listen, That's even right. Pete Davidson, when he messaged uh, That's Kanye, what I was he's say. like, yo, it's Skeet. Which is good that he does. That he I mean, at least he has, yeah, he has a, a sense of humor, at least. I know? will say that was pretty ballsy of him to be like, I'm in bed with your wife. True. I mean, knowing that the man is in the state that he in, he kind of jerked the knife a little bit in that A one. little bit. But apparently, according to... Allegedly. Right. Allegedly, according to Ye's version of the story, he was the one pushing for the divorce. He was the one... Oh, Pete? No. Kanye. Ye. Yeah, Kanye. He was the one... Oh, he was? Wasn't he, like, begging her to come back? He said something else on social media. But anyway... How was your week? <laughs> That's all I do is social media. My week is all revolving around Instagram. No, it's been a good week. Been busy with work. Been busy with all our projects, all the fun projects yes. we do. Oh. Um, we, yeah. we Okay, guys. We threw the best party in LA. We're not just saying that. We actually threw the best party in LA. Maybe we should show like a little bit of the footage of it. Yeah. Just like, just a little tease because, you know, we like to tease. So as you excited. I don't know if you guys know, but Dominicans find any excuse to party. And this was actually a really good excuse. It was the Independence Day. It was our our big Independence Day, which. 27 de Febrero. 27 de Febrero, 27th of of February. February. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, that's it. The year is over. We're in 2023 now. Might as well. And just like that. Might as well. <laughs> no, but it's like a big, really big deal in our yeah. country. You know, people take to the streets and we have Los the Los Cojuelos. We have like all these big traditions <laughs> right. that we as Dominicans do. So, of course, we are here not, not only in the United States, but on the West Coast, which is not particularly really filled with Dominicans as much as the East Coast would be, you know, as Boston, New York. All that area, there's a lot of Dominican representation. Not so much here in LA. Right. And we're all spread out also. The one, lo que estamos aquí, we're spread out everywhere. And per industry, right? So I think it's not not as easy right. to to kind of intermingle. But uh, our beautiful Sasha and then ourselves. Sasha Mercy, yeah. Sasha Mercy, uh, which we will have in another episode coming very soon, decided, you know what? Why not bring a little platano this way? Why not bring a little morisoñando yeah. this way? And we decided to throw the biggest bash that LA has ever seen and, in the Dominican And, and by the way, we were like, bueno, si viene 100 gente, like if 100 people come, 150, we're, we're good. 
We're, we're going to be good. And we just kept selling out and selling out and selling out. We had to. How many people came? Over 600 people. I mean. The fire marshal did not come. I know you were thinking. It. Brush your shoulders off. Ding, 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 ding. Brush your shoulders off. <laughs> all freaking day. But like, it was all very surprising. We had food trucks. We had Dominican DJ, who was also a security guard in case we needed him because we are all the things. We, as Dominicans. I mean, we, we do everything. <sighs> Seriously, you tell a Dominican a problem, and he's like, uh, "Problem? Yo, we got five solutions for listen, that problem." Listen, como decimos en, en, allá en Santo Domingo, we can sell ice in Alaska and in arena en el desierto and sand in the, in the desert. Lo que no vendemos nosotros, no one can. On a segue, you know what's so funny that in English I start translating all those things, <laughs> right? the English ones, and people are like, "What?" You're like, "What?" <laughs> like I was, I was seriously talking to like my white boyfriend one day a long time ago and I was like what do that person think they are the, the last, last coke in the desert <laughs> I was like, do okay. they think they're the last coke in the desert and he just looked like, at me like I what? know what that means but no one has ever said that ever I'm very I'm very confident but and, and talking about dating are you dating again what's going on so skeet what else is skeet <laughs> Yo, ski, yo. My, that's the non-dazing zone of these days. My hotation is really dry right now. Really? Self-admittedly. So we have I to... I mean, it was kind of raining a little bit back uh, not so long ago, but it did dry up. What was raining? Me? Or <laughs> the hotation? <laughs> no. Um, as you guys know, hotation, uh, dictionary definition here. Or as I like to call it, side dicks. Side dicks, right? So like, we need to have a platform. We need to have a pocket to dig into. You know, to not be lonely, to not just date one person, right? To have multiple people so that we're options. not... Options. You got to keep your options open. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. That's it. And then like me, I only have three eggs. So you got to like, <laughs> you know, you have to hurry up on that one. But yeah, my rotation has been really dry, mostly because I've been focused on so many beautiful projects of course, of and course. work and what, focus on myself, you know, and not going crazy, all those like basic stuff, right? Yeah, but um, that's okay. You need a little bit of that energy as well to keep the balance of the yin and the yang. You need to clean up. You need to. You, you to need clean to out. give your root chakra some energy because that's the creative. That's where all creation comes from, the root chakra. So um, you need to feed that. Feed the root chakra, guys. <laughs> Are you feeding the root chakra? Are you feeding her root chakra? What, you know, <laughs> one of the ideas that we had was to do like these fun things around town and record them. And one of the things that we we're going to do, we never did it, but maybe you guys can hold us accountable. Yes. It's the yoni steaming. Oh, yes. I still want to do that. that. Yes. I, I've actually done it. Talk about cleaning the root chakra. It's, wow. Cleaning uh, the deepest what secrets is, of your soul. What is it? Can you explain to me what it is exactly? Um, It's called vaginal steaming. And oh. it's like a, como se dice? It's una, a, a concoction. Is that how you say it in English? Yeah, concoction. Concoction. They make a tea for your vagina. Pretty much. Okay. And you sit on top of... Um, ¿cómo se llama eso? Um, like a box, like a box with a hole. Because I've seen pictures. Yeah, well, but there's like they they put that in, of course, in a container, hot, and then you sit on top of it, uh -huh. and you let the steam come up, and you you're covered so so the steam doesn't come out, and it really just extracts you know any toxins. If you suffer from uh, lots of yeast infections, if you like a friend of mine says, want to clear out the negative energy from your ex-boyfriend. I mean, esto te limpia. If you're closing off a rotation and starting off a new yeah, one. Yeah, you, you, yeah, it cleans so like, everything out. So it's like steaming broccoli, but it's not. It's steaming your... Yeah, but not broccoli. Because that's not a good <laughs> analogy. Porque el broccoli... It's like steaming, right? Like there's steaming going on. Right. So so, so do you recommend it? Yes, I do recommend it. Okay. It's really good. Um, how long, like how long are you steaming that for? Um, let me see. When I did it the last time, it was about, it was about like a good 20 minutes. Okay. That yeah. seems reasonable. Yeah. 20, 30 minutes, no more than that. Yeah. It's completely reasonable. 20 minutes, I'd say. Okay. Well, that's good. It's completely reasonable. So. How was, how was your week? How's your rotation going? Since mine is dried up. <laughs> mine is quite active. <laughs> oh. I've, been kind of acti I've been kind of active. Um, you know, I'm, it's been fun. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going How to How many in your rotation? <laughs> I can't reveal those details. What do you mean? No. It's just the play-by-play. -play. Um, But it's, um, I've been rotating, you know? So there's more than one. There's a rotation. She's letting us know. <laughs> it's been a lot of, oh, oh, you see? Did you, did you feel that? 
No. <laughs> Even the studio got all like energized. Did you feel the light? Was it the studio or you? <laughs> was it the studio or you? Or maybe someone from the other side trying to contact us since we were talking about that last She's telling week. Telling you to shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> right. Just like don't say reveal no more. too much. Exactly. Okay. Gotta so you're happy mystery. with your rotation. Yeah, I mean it's it's good. It's mm -hmm. it's good. But mm -hmm. I have to say I had the most amazing week. As you know, it was my birthday. It was our birthday. Um, and I did quite a few interesting things. The highlight of my week being that I went skydiving with none other than Sean McCormick. I'm losing you to white people. I am <laughs> Listen, losing you to white people. I'm still high. I'm still high from that jump. And she doesn't even drink. And I don't even, exactly. And I don't even drink. So ya tu te puedes imaginar. That feeling is the most peaceful the most amazing feeling i've had in a long time because if there's anything going on in your mind any worries any um any anxiety anything that you have going on once you're up there it disappears like nothing matters wow. so what i take from this is first of all learning how to trust just really trusting the process mm -hmm. one in life You just have to jump and trust that the parachute is going to open. Or like that famous um, quote, jump and the leap will, uh, leap and the nest will appear. It's the same thing. You just got to trust and jump and know that the parachute will open. She's very philosophical. I mean, if today, it doesn't guys. open, then bueno, se joyo to. It was, it was your day. It, it was, was your, your day, day to day. go. Uh, but the guy but with the hat came to pick you up. But even the guy with the hat, that's right. He's like, hey. No, but that's, it's really philosophical. You know what's so funny that I've always had this thought that like it's not a Latino thing or it's not a minority thing to do these kind of like daredevil things because I feel right. like we already had so many things growing up. Right. Like the chancleta could kill you at any moment. And, and could take you out. Listen, and so like, our survival skills are like we're, we're born with it. Yeah. We are like, oh man, <laughs> matrix. What matrix? We were born with the matrix, you know? So it's like, it's funny to me because I always see those kind of daredevilish things. Right. Like even just going down with a bike down a hill. And I'm like, why, why would you possibly right. do this? Right. And actually, um, on the way here, Boris was telling me, Catherine, you just have that in your blood. Like I, he's known me for the longest time. He's like, I know that you like these extreme stuff. Um, I wasn't afraid, not one bit, en ningún momento. But, but also, I mean... You don't always get to jump like with one of the best jumpers in the country. You know, Sean McCormick is multiple award winning, multiple medallas. Like he trains Navy SEALs. He's done like over 22,000 jumps. Like doesn't get any better than that. It's not your cousin Juanito jumping. From no, <laughs> no. And, and, and let me tell you, I have an experience. And this is one of the reasons why I did it. Because mm -hmm. when I was a child, one of the best jumpers in my country, uh, in the military, There was an air show, air show uh, was being performed at the Dominican Air Force. And um, it was during the anniversary of the Air Force. And they always do like great air shows. And I used to live in the Air Force. And we went to the show. Uh, my brother is my mom, uh, my dad, all of us. And this guy was a really good friend of ours, one of our best friends. Mm -hmm. The best jumper, known to be the best jumper in the country, the best jumper in the Air Force, the Esquadron de Combate. And he jumped and his parachute didn't open. And then his emergency parachute didn't open. And no. I saw him. Yes. He plummeted to his death. Yes. Right in front of me. No. Yes. And you still jumped. And I still jumped. Yes. Because and that was the purpose of that. If any psychologist that. is watching right now, can you please send us what this means? <laughs> Because I wouldn't even go down the stairs after that. That's well, crazy. Well, how old were you? I was about 13 years old. When and this happened. didn't traumatize you? I'm, of course it did. Oh, my goodness. And this is one of the reasons that I wanted to do it because I figured. It's reenacting the ending. I need Finishing. to get over this. Mm -hmm. And if it's my day, it's my day. That's why I told you and Sasha and, and, and some people in my life. I didn't tell everyone I was jumping like you and Sasha knew, but I just told some people, I love you. I texted and this bitch in the morning. I was like, listen, like, bitch, you better come back to me because I will kill you if you die. <laughs> After is, I die, she's going to come back and kill me. And if that's, not, that <laughs> if that's not the most Dominican thing you've ever heard, our parents when we were little, si te cae, if you fall down, I'm going to hit you on top of the fall. 
Yeah, like, they would. We they were, would. We were deadly scared of anything happening to us because if something happened to us, we knew we were going to get slapped La on top of it. No iban a dar. So for me, um, it was an eye-opening experience. And now what I'm trying to, because A, here you really have to be in the moment. Yeah, I mean, there's no faking that one. There's definitely you're, no. You're down and down. There's no, can we redo? There's no redoing. Right, there's, there's no rethinking. No. So you you really have to be in the moment and be present. And we hear this a lot, but here you really have to do it. And and of course, I was. And, and also, you have no option but to. Yeah. There's no other option. And for me, it's like, okay, how do I take this and recreate this on my everyday life in, in, in todas las áreas, in all areas of my life. You just have to trust and jump and go for it. I love that metaphor. I think it's such a beautiful metaphor that we we all think too much. We all plan too much. We're yes. all not ready enough to do whatever it is that we want to do when the mm -hmm. reality is that if you want it enough, you just jump and you figure it out. And you figure it out. And so I think I think very much I'm trying to to step into that space in my mm -hmm. life, and I think I'm working on so many beautiful projects right. these days. We're work, we yes. just launched, we accidentally launched a production <laughs> company. So like things like yes. that are super exciting because we're not asking ourselves, are we scared? We're not asking ourselves, is this a possibility? Yeah, we're, we're not asking permission. We're just doing it. That's yeah. right. And I think I think if more women specifically, especially were to do that, I think this world would be a much better place. Like, I Absolutely. wholeheartedly believe that women are the real trickle-down economics. Oh, 100%. If you, if you empower women, if that woman feels like she's strong enough to achieve whatever it is she wants to achieve, she will trickle that energy back into her tribe. Oh, completely, completely. She will uh, She will empower them. She will help them. She will help them rise with them. I mean, that's just how we are. And and also, we're the big spenders here. We, some of, we move the economy. Seriously. We really are. You know what's funny though that when Kim K was like, "No one wants the work anymore," she's uh, not wrong. Like honestly, in certain extent, she's not wrong. She's just the wrong person to she, deliver the right. message. <laughs> but I have had a really hard time. You know, my real estate business is really taking off. Mm -hmm. It's really growing. Been trying to hire people to just support me. Like, listen, I'm going to pay you to train you. All these like wonderful right. offers, and people just don't want to work. Like I had one girl being like, she showed three properties for me, and after that, she was like. Listen, can you schedule the other showings after 1 p.m.? Like, nothing early. I'm like, bitch, I wake up at 5. Are you kidding me? Okay. So, you know, I there mean, is... Can you give me, like, just an hour of showings? And, like, un día sí, un día no? But I'm going to be the top Asian in the world. Also, can I have a latte with that? A nice latte. I, I mean, I don't even know what it is. Is it just... Because I'm a millennial, well, so I don't get it. Yes, it's. I think it's um, social media plays a big role in this mm -hmm, because mm -hmm, social mm -hmm. media is only highlighting, in which, as Highlight we know, a lot of it is fake. Highlighting people, como es, as we discovered, flying on fake private jets when oh it's... Oh, my God, it's so funny. <laughs> it's like a, one, a set. <laughs> it's a set. One little window, <laughs> right. a fake champagne. And a right. whole crowd. Right. And so, so everyone is highlighting a lot of stuff that's fake stuff or or only the positive things um, in their lives. And they're not highlighting the work that gets to get to yep. that space. Right. Like there is there is. Sure, I get to show really beautiful properties and help amazing people achieve mm -hmm. their real estate dreams. But I'm not showing or well, I am showing you're just deciding not to see. I am showing that the fact that I have to show them 25 properties and we lose out on 10 different things. And right. there's tears and, you know, and their everyday savings and me waking up at 5 a.m. and coronation, all that kind of stuff. Like no yeah. one wants to see that part. They want to no just, one wants to see the process. I just want the end the result. The highlight reel. Yeah, they just want the you know that instant gratification. Yeah, I think we need to do better. We really, really need to do better because mm -hmm. the reality is that there's no free rides. Nope, not and nothing is for free. Nothing is for free, Hollywood. Do you hear, it, girls? Do you hear it? I'm, 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 I'm thinking. Is there anything free? Is there? I mean, they I say mean, the best things in life are free, but here's the reality, right? right? Like spending time with your friends that costs money. Every, it's free, but it costs yeah, money. Yeah, but everything. Basically, what I'm saying for free, and there is, it's not always about money, but there's always a sacrifice to be yes, made. There Everything, there you go. For one thing that you get in the, or you acquire, whatever it is, there's a sacrifice behind it. Right? That's true. So that's, that's the price of that. 
It's very true. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you are spending time with X person, you are not doing other things that you wanted to do. Right. So there's a time sacrifice. And I I would venture to say time is probably your precious, our our biggest most precious asset. Yep. asset because, if, you know, you can make more money. My grandmother used to say, money is made, go, go find it, go get it. And I wholeheartedly believe that. Time and relationships. Wealth is not necessarily, um, it's not about money, but it's about the relationships that you build. Your network right? is your net worth. Yep. 100%. Your network is oh your my network. God, we're Hakitama, we're dropping. Are we like, uh, what's Tony Robbins? Motivational speaker. Are we Tony Robbins? Are we Tonya Robbins? What's happening right here? Toñita. Toñita Robbins. Que lo que. Oh, by the way, speaking about que lo que, we have to give some props to Gregory here. Gregory is killing it. Gregory, o sea. Gregory, our guy. Gregory. He's our sound guy, by la, the way. You can't la... see him, but he's behind the camera. He's our sound guy. He is our Gregory savior. Gregory Taduro. Gregory Taduro. He's, he, um... he did get me the most strong coffee in the entire <laughs> world, so I might be sleeping for three days. I love you, Gregory. By the way, his name is not Gregory, it's but not. we named him Gregory. Ya se quedó. <laughs> Yo digo Gregorio. Más jodido todavía. He's fucked. That's what we do. It's just what we do. Anyway, what else? I mean, I want to go skydiving again. I, I mean, I'm excited because uh-huh. we're going to have Sean on the pod very soon. Okay, you I, FaceTime me as I'm drinking tequila. <laughs> this is going to go really well. I'm going to go skydive in tequila and you go skydive in the air. It's going to yeah, be great. I'm excited to have him on the show and I'm excited for you guys to meet him and, and, and get to know his story. He's a fascinating character. He truly is. You see, you know that we meet a lot of people get, that pretend to be like badass. No, this guy is like the real deal. He's so badass. He's so amazing. And his energy is so contagious. I think those kind of people have a have great stories, right? Like, I, I don't mm-hmm. believe that there is anyone in life that is, like, well-achieved and and just, like, a force to be reckoned with mm-hmm. if they don't ha- – if they haven't had, like, really tough things that they've undergone in life. Yeah. Like, those to me are the most interesting people in the, wor- on the world. Like, I want to hear all your stories. Right. Right. And um, yeah, I'm excited to have him on and, and, and hear everything that he has to say, um, how he became, you know, the jumper that he is today. We're excited. We have a lot of really great guests coming up for you guys. So many funny people, so many oh other good God, times yes. that we're going to be we're going to be talking about. How much fun did we have, by the way, with Nick Guerra? Nick Guerra was fucking <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> so funny. By the way, I love his laugh. Yeah, his, his laugh, laugh is really is, Yeah, his laugh alone just makes me laugh, makes me happy. Yeah, I know. It's so funny because he looks like very, you know, like a professor. Like if you just so look at him serious, in the corner. Yes. You're like, do you teach law And Harvard? And also, by the way, I've noticed about him that on his comedy shows, he's always so well-dressed. Siempre tiene, he's always like in a suit. Mm-hmm. And then he comes and, and cracks the funniest jokes. What, how come he came here like he was half homeless? What the fuck was that? <laughs> Nick, <laughs> the fuck? Um, we'll have him on, on another episode. He already promised. And he's like, I'm going to dress up. Maybe he'll do it. Maybe he'll do his hair. <laughs> well, that's all we got for this week. We love you guys so much. We have a lot of great stuff coming up in the podcast. Thank you for tuning in for another episode and another season. We are so excited. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And, and um, and follow us on Instagram, on Facebook at Talk Fast Listen, at Talk Fast Listen Slow. And where can you find us? We're in all the places you pod, you silly person. Spotify, iTunes. We're going to start a Patreon soon. Um, yes. Well, that's all happening. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Kat. And I'm Angela. And you are fabulous. See you next week. <laughs>